And this is a brief tutorial on how to build a Cisco ASA 5506 from the beginning. My assumption is you have very little experience or absolutely no experience at all bringing one of these devices up. The goal is bring this up, get it a basic configuration and running on the internet. The first part of this is getting the licensing worked out. So before you purchase your device, you want to go to Cisco site and create a CCO account at this www.cisco.com. Once you have a CCO account, you can purchase your device and they will ask your CCO ID and all of your licensing will be associated with that, con with that account, kind of. Once you get your service contract, you need to call Cisco directly and provide them with your CCO number and your contract number for your device. You should always buy a CCO support contract with any Cisco device you buy. Once that is completed, you will then be able to download your licensing and apply them to the device. So to get your licensing, the next step will be go to this website, hover over the support section here, and go down to register and manage licenses. You can skip this section, although the first few times you do this, couldn't hurt to take this little video tour. You move forward by clicking here, and then once again clicking here. When you open the license pack file, it'll come in the form of a PDF. What you're looking for in the document is the product authorization key pack, and that's this little bugger right here. We want to get, copy this information, and this is what we're going to use to get the licensing uh, completed. Here I've pasted the licensing information into the window. The next step is to go to fulfill. It tells the whole pack, the quantity. It says available 999, but if you look, if you put 9999, like it says here, and a two, you'll go next. It'll actually tell you you only have a quantity of one. Don't freak out. All this means is that this is a perpetual license and it never expires. So you leave it at one. It'll default to that if you try to make if you make a mistake with it. You click on next, and now it wants the serial number for the target device. Since I have not started up the firewall yet, I did pull the serial number from the bottom of the device directly so that I, I like to get the licensing uh, pieces of this done well in advance and agree and then submit and you can see the license now is going to be sent to the email address we, we predetermined we also have a transaction ID if we need it in this case, I don't need to wait for the uh, email address, so I will come over here to licenses. I don't like to wait. I'm kind of impatient. We now see that we have two of these. We have this 50-pack one, which is a perpetual license as of shows it assigned today. We will go down to action. Uh, actually, excuse me, check the box. Go to action, download, download the license. And we will get a zip file down here. This is what this way you have it right now, and you have to hunt through emails. And if you're like me, you're dealing with a lot of different email addresses. This is what the license file will look like when you open it. This is what the license file looks like. As you can see, we now have added any connect peer for 50 users and it's a peer premium which is now the 4.2 or used to be called AnyConnect Plus. This license information will be applied on the ASA in a future step. This is the end of the licensing component of this. There are more to apply to this device and will be covered in another section.